welcome to the talk on the hand of <coughs> for etcd data inconsistencies. Um, data inconsistencies are pretty is unique animal, so finding them is more than an art than um, strict science, at least yet. So hopefully after the talk you will have a better understanding <coughs> of the topic and be able to find uh, inconsistencies in your own system. I'm Mark Sierkowicz, uh, I work at Google and I'm one of the etcd maintainers. So the topic for today is I would like to define what are data inconsistencies, what tools we use to handle them, and how etcd has adapted to, 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 to find the problems that we had uh, with inconsistencies. So at the end, I will do a short demo showing you how, how it works in practice. Uh, <clears throat> so etcd implements uh, so-called distributed consensus. It means that uh, multiple units, processes, work uh, as a, or multiple processes of etcd server run as a single unit, a cluster that can cons consistently respond to user requests. So any user can observe the same data, C any write by a user can be observed by all the users. So what is the inconsistency? Inconsistency is when one of the, <coughs> one of the instances breaks loose and starts spilling nonsense. Uh, no matter how cool your free head dragon is, it doesn't. It stop working when one of the uh, one of the heads goes berserk. Uh, to give you more concrete example, here is a real production um, case uh, that I noticed and tried to document, uh, where etcd inconsistency caused problems with. Uh, etcd cluster, uh, Kubernetes cluster, using it. Uh, in this case, uh, etcd uh, or Kubernetes nodes uh, were flapping from status re, uh, ready and not ready. There were random failures, random timeouts. Authorization didn't work sometimes. Um, sometimes it worked. So how do you know <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Addons were crashing. Um, yeah, uh, basically because of like architecture, one of the, the API servers was totally misbehaving. And what was the root cause? It was just missing one, exactly one write. So <clears throat> uh, as you see on the graph, missing one write can uh, cause the, the revision of uh, etcd to totally diverge. This is because how Kubernetes uses etcd uh, and its revision is pretty crucial for Kubernetes correctness. Um, to, to, to explain, uh, revision is like global counter for each change that happen, happen, uh, is happening in the cluster, and revision is used by Kubernetes for optimistic concurrency control. So <clears throat> uh, the, the example above was unrelated, but why I'm talking uh, to you today is about the state of etcd 3.5.0. The release was done after a long time with a lot of changes in the project, uh, including total change of maintainers and loss of a lot of knowledge that was unwritten between maintainers and not passed. Uh, at the, like we, the work motiva uh, that motivated etcd to, 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 to look into the problem further was uh, two, uh, two, let's say, inconsistencies uh, or correctness issues. One was data inconsistency on crash, so your instance of etcd server could be happily running and then, I don't know, it ooms or, or your VM runs of memory or it ooms or is killed, etcd could made, uh, make an incorrect write uh, that results in it, this one instance being inconsistent with other members. In second case, apparently no one noticed that etcd for a long time didn't provide durability in some cases. 
uh, yeah, and we got and are still mostly not have not full explanation for multiple reports that are currently m very hard to reproduce and understand. We are trying to, to, to build tools to, to understand them, but at the current state, we have multiple reports that are unconfirmed, unverified, but also not un fully uh, understood. The problem underlying this is etcd doesn't have a test suite that is cap capable to detect this class of issues. I expect most of the pro problem, uh, projects and databases don't have these kinds of tests. Uh, but compared to most databases, they don't build for full ecosystem. So no matter what anyone says, etcd is the building block for Kubernetes, which is the building block for full cloud native infrastructure. Like we cannot deny it. We need to do better, like as a project. Like we cannot, we cannot like let this slide. So how do we ha how do we hunt for inconsistencies? Uh, <clears throat> what is the previous art? So previously etcd was using uh, functional tests. So functional tests, they are pretty simple. They just run etcd instance. They do some failure injection and maybe when they finish, verify if is the state consistent between the members. Uh, <clears throat> there were multiple problems with them. Like may, one main thing, it was they were written by one person and when they, this person left the project, no one knew how to use it. No one understood them. They didn't work. Like they run like. Most of the time, they flagged also a lot. But the pro it was not solving the issue <coughs> directly as it, it didn't solve like the issue end to end. It just gave us a signal that was very flaky. But if you go into state of the art, uh, you can find Jepson. So <coughs> uh, Kyle Kingsbury is a person that is really interested in correctness of uh, databases. So he built whole, I would say, project and community that validates safety of distributed databases and verify, like, checks if there are guarantees that they are saying that they're giving checks, is those uh, guarantees truth? Or is the database lying or selling there? Or is, the, is it selling more? than the, the reality is. And they were multiple time, uh, times used successfully to validate etcd project. But the, this solution is al also not perfect for an open source project uh, that is uh, written in Go, has limited capacity, and doesn't want to learn new language, be forced to work on AWS or learn a whole new domain uh, domain like for, from distributed systems which are known to be pretty hard uh, they were also never designed to run in ci so if they are if etcd changes anything in api uh, and it breaks the tests it cannot be easily verified someone needs to run them manually to uh, on every time we make a change so they cannot be const used for continuous validation. And at the end, like maybe personal opinion, but we couldn't reach out to even ask CNCF to pay the, the owner of the, of the system to, to help us. So what, we, what the tools that we need, need to, what are the requirements? So <clears throat> uh, what we need to build is something that is adequate. By this, I mean it not only reproduces all historical issues that we know of, and in every like reproduces them easily and every time, and and we can use that to always va validate correctness of the tests. You not only, but also is able to go through all the generic properties of etcd and find new issues that we haven't thought of. The 
the tools need to be also accurate. So there cannot be, a, <clears throat> uh, they cannot be just run and not return anything. And maybe they work, maybe they don't work. They need to be strict. So they, every time that we validate, I know, killing a machine or killing the process, they need to validate that it happened and the Red responded because I know someone changes the some code and it no longer skills the process and process that lives and we stop validating, which happened to functionality tests that at the end they didn't validate because sometimes they didn't test or run the, <coughs> run the disruption that they were meant to do. Uh, and accurate, we need to know who, we, if there is a failure, we need to be able to attribute it. Is it a problem with the test or is it the problem with etcd? Like if, if we don't have it, like we flip a coin and uh, in finding the issue or interpreting or picking the issue and we flip a coin when, when someone like spends a lot of time to try to reproduce it or understand it instead of getting a clear signal is it at what who is to blame the tools also need to be maintainable so they need to be run always by everyone they can they need to be run on each pr they need to be able to be run every day for long term for a long time um, Part of the etcd testing uh, is using the end-to-end -end suite, which is just a like, wrapper for starting a process with configuration. But reusing the existing framework was, would save us huge amount of maintenance costs because we just need to run etcd. Like, we don't need magic. We just need to have an etcd instance and check if it behaves correctly. Um, yeah, uh, so for that, I would want to go to uh, robustness, which is how I want to define what we are trying to va validate. So robustness is ability of the system to maintain correctness under any condition. So correctness is any guarantee that we are say saying to our users that we give them. And the, any condition is any condition. Is it a cloud failure? Uh, is it a process problem or disk or bytes get flipped? We don't care. This is, we just need a correct system. So to give a detail, here is like high level or overview with guessing how frequent the issues could be happening. But this is the le level of granularity that we want to consider. So <clears throat> outside of normal operations, which are the trivial case, we need to know if there is a problem, if there is a normal packet loss that happens every day. We need to know if during upgrades, is there an issue? And are we still correct even if people pick unsupported or not as obvious upgrade path? Uh, we need to also take account of standard failures, like uh, people just shutting down their machines. It's not always obvious that at every code line, this, uh, if the process is killed at any code line, it will be still correct. And going into more obscure failures that happen pretty rare, even this is more number from on-premise, but when multiple bit flips occur, you can get data, corrupt data corruptions of memory that fulfill the CRC code. So they seem from process correct. They could be random, sometimes randomly flipped. What does correctness mean here? Uh, etcd promises to the user two types of guarantees. One is about key value API. And second one is about watch. Uh, they are separated because one is mm, request, re it, one is request response like, 
and second one is more subscri subscribing to some changes. So one is by delayed by definition. So <clears throat> key value changes needs to be need to be atomic. So either a transaction succeeds fully or it never happened. Key value changes need to be durable. So if I make a write, this write is permanent for forever. And no matter if your desk like disk fails or uh, yeah, uh, if process shut down new, if I restart the etcd, it should have the data that I wrote. And uh, API needs to be linear, linearizable. I will go into that further, but it basically means that every change is ordered by the real time, uh, real time counterpart. So you can order the changes and by time. Um, the watch guarantees mean that uh, watch guarantees gives you a global order. So etcd, all the changes to etcd have a revision number, which is a global number, and all the changes on the watch should be ordered by this number. Etcd changes needs to be uh, etcd watch needs to be reliable, so it never it should never drop any sub um, <clears throat> any events or sub sub um, yeah any part of stream uh, within. So you should get all the revisions. And uh, etcd and watch needs to be atomic, which means if there is transaction that changes multiple keys they should be sent uh, within as one unit within one response instead of being split between multiple responses. So basically you should observe every time you, you get an event uh, or response, you should observe all the events that happened within this revision. So how do we validate correctness? We can take the part from the functional tests, which is we take some scenario, we run, uh, at CD, we inject some failures and we send some traffic. But how do we validate the correctness? This is the, the hard part. Do, what do we take or what do we read from at CD or failures or traffic to, to make a decision? How do we validate it? So this comes to, to uh, broader topic of uh, fact that we cannot use traditional testing uh, that is scripted. So tests like unit tests, functional tests, uh, integration tests, they all follow a trajectory. They fall, all follow some script that someone defined and can never derive. And the moment that the tests or the te what you are testing derives from what you expect, the test fails. So we can't use those. How do we text, test generic properties? So for help, here comes exploratory testing. So if you ever did fast testing or ever tested pro did property testing, this is what I'm talking about. So not testing a scenario, testing some invariant, testing some property of what of the system. But the problem is, how do we like? Okay, so we have a approach. How do we do validation? Here comes model-based testing. So a model is a simplified implementation that is easy to understand by anyone. Should fit in couple couple, let's say hundred lines, and behaves like the full system, so full fancy, multi, uh, multi distributed, multiple uh, nodes system should at the end behave like a simple 100 line code uh, structure or class. Uh, a model test uh, or using model testing requires us to collect operation history and from real system and valid replay it on the model. So if the model represents correct 
and desired behavior of the system, replaying the same the history should give us answer. Is the system behaving as it's supposed to be? So for etcd, etcd is simple key value store. Like, how can why cannot we use a hash map with a counter? That's all. But there is another problem. Which order, like here we have a set of requests that were re executed by multiple users. M multiple, they, they are concurrent requests that are done. They, there are different types of requests. How do we know what order they came in? Etcd knows, but as, when we test, we don't know what is happening at CD. So how do we know? Uh, and here comes the linearizability testing, or linear linearizability tracker, which which is a tool that can take uh, operation history and the model and find the order. So it basically on the for the image here, it basically goes through every operation and cre creates a line that is consistent with how model would behave. So we don't know what order of the operations happened on etcd. We can just, based on history, derive one way it could do this that is correct. If there is, if there is no way to collect the, connect the lines that is correct, it means etcd is incorrect. Or at least something is like, at least the test fail. And we can then go there and validate is the etcd or the model incorrect. So this gives us a full solution. The etcd robustness test is as described the part that gen, uh, starts the cluster, injects some failures, gen, generates some traffic, then collects the history of both operations, which are like key value put get and watch history. The operations combined with the model can give us, uh, can be passed to linearizability tracker, we can, which gives us answer, is it correct or is it not? Watch history, it's a little bit simpler because we already, it's ordered, we already know the order of this results, we can just write simple functions to validate. Validated. So, <clears throat> when we when we started uh, this, uh, or when I started this effort, we f we quickly figured out that no one knows how etcd is used by Kubernetes. So, we, me with Han Kang, uh, we worked on defining the contract because without the, the exact contract, how do we know what we test? Uh, there were unwritten assumptions done la long time time ago that are technically correct, but no one wrote them down. And we discovered properties like uh, renewability or watch being renewable, which means that Kubernetes supports bookmarks and it it uses it to save progress but if it's those those safe or bookmarks need to be sent when they are sent they need to guarantee that all the events uh, before the bookmark were sent and if not at uh, kubernetes will start from incorrect point it will go either far forward or far far before instead of the current last change and we discovered that it was broken in etcd in some cases. So what are the results? <clears throat> and we found, as, as of today, three issues. Uh, most, I mean, related to different parts. Surprisingly, even uh, they're, they're much rarer or there was one behavior that no one ever tested, which is uh, etcd recovering its state from other members, and we found out that watch can travel back in time. We found 
yeah, duplicated events, we found uh, that defrag uh, can cause an uh, inconsistency. It was just really, really rare. So what we will be doing next, uh, or what, are, what I'm working on, what is the next steps for us? Like we, we had results, how, what, what we should do next. We need to codify for, for the whole contract. Like we just touched it, like it, it's not nearly done. Um, we need to make the tests or failure injections much more, much more advanced. Like we don't test uh, disk crash, uh, disk disconnection, or basically, yeah, uh, disk, m mostly disk crashing and kernel losing the data that was unsynced. Um, we are already working on Bbolt, which is the embedded key value store, to to uh, to do, have the same test suite or same approach for testing to find really, really obscure failures that look like silent data corruptions, which means it's just problem that most people don't discover. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we can also validate the history. In, uh, we can use the history validation in every test because every test that makes a, is an API test, so it tests Goes, goes to API, or end-to-end -end tests go to API, is doing some operations, generating some history. We can validate the history that the tests are correct. We can check if our tests are like correct or not. Um, and the last thing, when we have contract and fully tested on etcd, we can bring this contract, implement it in the model, implement it in the a model have a model that fully implements the contract maybe with some changes to make it more efficient we can move it to kubernetes and have kubernetes verify back what is happening and thus speeding up kubernetes testing much more because it doesn't need to start full at cd instance it can be just a process level test so let's see how it works in practice so here I have a ready command that I can run, which basically <clears throat> does three things <laughs> as described, oh, and it's so fast. So what is happening here is we are starting etcd server, we are checking its health, we inject the fail point, we inject the fail point, which is uh, which is a maintainer. Uh, put or maintainers put in the etcd code base fail points for s in the code base or comments that work as fail points in etcd code base that can be later that are in critical points and can be later used by this test suite to uh, uh, with use of special library they can be used to say, say to etcd hey crash at this point and we have many of those and we then do a strict validation is the like if we set up the the, uh, the fail point exact here in raft before saved which is a raft uh, some place when we call raft we expect it to exit and if it doesn't exit the test also fails because we want to test that the fail point worked so we we should be strict here the member exited as expected and this can be the recorded history. We can take recorded history here, 2,400 something uh, operations, and with some average traffic. So we can simulate and will require minimal traffic, QPS. So not only test low traffic, like I know, <laughs> playing around with etcd, but also pretty verify that traffic that we are getting is as, as high that we've seen in some cases and then validate it. And what the test does is says, does model is in not linearizable, which is incorrect. Or it means that there is a problem with etcd. Here, I specifically took, uh, I specifically, specifically took 
an existing issue, an existing an etcd version that was vulnerable to this issue, and I reproduced it with one command, and it took five seconds. At the end of the test, the test reports all the important information that anyone can use to validate. Is it the test, is it the problem with etcd, or is it problem with the test suite, or the model? So we can take this URL that is here. Mm, I have it prepared, but for demo sake, I will refresh it. And we get this visualization. We can click jump to, jump to first error, and we see that vis visualization has reported an issue. Here, we are using uh, uh, on the top or, or on the the name of the page is Percupine. This is the linearization checker that we are using and gives us this, uh, this uh, HTML file. And it shows the durability issue I described, which is there was a put request that set revision 601. Next, there is a the next put request set revision 600 true. And then it was never persisted. So all the following requests have revision that is lower than that what client recorded, which means we, the model doesn't allow us to connect those, to find any connection to the next operation and proves that, and proves that, uh, or gives a proof that a human can verify and read that there is a problem. Okay. So when you should use uh, model-based testing, we can validate, it's great for testing generic approaches to, to, to correctness. It separates validation phase from the uh, execution phase, which means we can generate the report, verify that the operations or the model, we can find, check is the model incorrect or the CD. If the etcd is incorrect, we have a proof. If it's the model, we can fix the model and rerun it on the same history. We will, it should work. Like we fix the issue, we can verify that we fix the issue. And as I mentioned, model is reusable, so we can plug it in any one that wants etcd fast. Uh, of course, it, no, 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 not everyone needs 100% correctness. I mean, I hope you do, but I don't know. Um, model, I simplified the model. It can get really complicated, mainly because it needs to assume that client can observe a data loss, and this data loss not necessarily is lost. Server can crash before it responds the client, even though it persisted the response. This means, uh, the, uh, as the next point mentions, it, it's an AP, uh, NP complete problem. We, the, the state increases exponentially or lin validating linear usability. Uh, cost of this increases exponentially, making the test pretty fragile if you have any, any uh, bugs or any unoptimization. So it's, it's not uh, like one tool for everything. So if anything of, anything in this presentation make you interested in the topic, we, this is public, you can go to etcd code, read, read it, and contribute new fail points. At the end, maybe I would think about generalizing it, so not only etcd can, can be validated. Um, that's the end of presentation. If you want to give me any feedback, you're welcome to take this, uh, make a screenshot and send it, or, and le let me know. That's, that's all, thank you. Uh, do you have a, do we have any questions? Yeah. Hi, Marek. Thijs Abbas, uh, ING. Question. What's the maximum size you would test HD against in number of objects? What's the size? Is it 10,000? Is it 100,000? More? 
the size doesn't like really like for the robustness does it doesn't really matter. It's about QPS. So if you have SSD and it can like the more QPS you simulate, you, the the higher the probability you will find the issue. So it's, I mean, the faster like you can test even in memory like it, it needs to be persistent. Like assuming that memory is you trust the memory that is persistent. So it could be really really fast, uh, but. I don't care about how big is it. It could be fully certain memory to make the test faster. Okay, thank you. Uh, the mic, oh, the mic is on this side. So if you have question, it would be faster. If you, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Hi, Marek. Thank you so much. I was just wondering whether you have already any plan, like for testing network latency and things like that, because I see that right now you're using like these uh, fault points that you inject into the code base. But what about like testing these other like external conditions which are not necessarily like in the code, like crashes? We are testing latency. I mean, latency is not interesting part because Raft is validated to be correct. But uh, an interesting point, we found problems related to, it's more behaving like data manipulation, because if the packet is halfly cast, cut, you cannot detect that. If the packet matches the block, and then you lose one block, because it's JSON, you could, it's correct, but there is no right. Like, the, the missing, the case, I expect this is the case with missing one right. Like, you could cut, if you, there's probability that it cut, traffic is cut in a way that uh, allows request to be missing, and RAV doesn't account for that. We have a, like, for a functional test, they implemented already a proxy with very naive implementation. It's not great. And we, yeah, I, I'm, there is something that I would want to improve to something generic, like there is a custom solution which is not very advanced. But yeah, we are simulating network partition, delaying, and and uh, packets dropped. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you a lot uh, for your speech. Uh, there is a question. Uh, there is a slide which told us uh, what all non-AWS uh, setup was broken. Yes. And the question is, uh, is there a more stable setup configuration or something else? Uh, I think, so I, we needed to fix, or I had a comp contributor and that was trying to use Docker and they apparently made, because they knew no closure, they fixed some parts of it and apparently they were able to get results, uh, but uh, because they changed their project, I don't know if they, they left the like etcd community so I don't know if they contributed to the changes uh, in, in like Jepson and infrastructure setup back to the Docker. So and like AWS apparently worked great, but nothing else like is proven to. Yeah. Uh, um, I'd just like to ask about um, performance with etcd with splitting out we running um an on-prem where uh what's the name all our uh etcd is running on um one disk um and we've been advised to look at splitting out the well and uh data into separate drives um because it's all vms we can't exactly split out onto ssds what other performance tuning tips are there i i'm so I, my, most of my work is in correctness. I cannot say about performance. There is a talk on KubeCon about perf to tuning at CD. I would encourage to go there. I mean, I could give you examples from Kubernetes. So what I give is usually look at Kubernetes scalability tests. They support 5,000 nodes. If someone claims that at CD is imperformant, they haven't even read open source code that gives you ready etcd configuration that is like the like kubernetes guarantees 5000 nodes pr release will be not cut if it doesn't support 5000 nodes like if you need more we can ask kubernetes but 
it's it is the, it's ready configuration. There is no magic like wow. as some. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, Esquelite is uh, famous for having uh, was on one of the most comprehensive uh, uh, testing um, for correctness uh, CI. I don't know. I wonder if you looked at uh, like the difference in practice. Uh, if you could get inspiration from that, or if it's too different. Uh, yeah. uh, it's. I read the code, uh, or I watched the presentation by Kyle. I read some code. I understood some parts of it. Uh, Collecting history is the same. What is done or what traffic is sent and what is verified is a little bit different. It's more advanced. It's like even in some ways more advanced because it does, it's not as fragile as what I, uh, the model based testing I described. It more validates, let's say, for the limited model, it validates some distributed system properties. And if it can, because of limited traffic type or limited operation, I can like send you to the, what, on the page of etcd or reports from etcd. The limited traffic allows you to make some assumptions about like setting a variable or like, or append only traffic and gives you, give you properties that you can verify that if you, there is append only operations, it means that it should always grow and some prefix, sub suffix properties. Um, but outside of that, uh, it's more, uh, it's, or it's more like more advanced and more uh, more reliable. But I don't know if it's like, yeah, I'm, that's all. I most okay. Thank you. If you have any questions, I can still answer them here. <laughs>